So in this talk, I go, I'm going to give you some insights about my research on computational methods to make robots increasingly autonomous. And since it is late in the afternoons, I'll uh, keep the talk light, and meaning that I'll show you some cool movies. <laughs> so let me start with uh, saying that uh, autonomous systems, like for example, self-driving cars or drones, will likely be pervasive in our society. And their adoption will transform a number of uh, critical domains, for example, transportation, where, for example, uh, autonomous cars could provide on-demand mobility, or logistics, where, for example, drones could uh, uh, deliver packages to customers within 30 minutes, or even in the aerospace domains, where you can, you can conceive uh, space robots that can assemble large space structures in space, or even space robots exploring uh, uh, distant planetary bodies. Now, the idea of uh, automating a process is certainly not new. For example, the automotive industry has been relying for the past few decades on uh, manufacturing robots to assemble cars. For example, here I'm showing a number of uh, um, robotic manipulators putting together a Fiat 500, which is one of the Italian prides. And I'm Italian. <laughs> but the point here is that uh, what really distinguishes uh, uh, automation from uh, autonomy is the degree of repeat repeatability of robotic tasks. In the sense that uh, um, automation refers to robotic systems which are limited to specific actions that are pre for pre-programmed situations. Whereas autonomy refers to systems that can react to situations that cannot be pre-programmed or anticipated at the design stage. This brings to a key question. How can we endow a machine with the capability of making rapid and reliable decisions without knowing a priori all the possible scenarios that can occur? And here, reliability is a key concept because many of these systems are safety critical, meaning that if an issue arises, some people could die. So before going into the details of my research uh, aimed at addressing this question, let me show you a case where uh, showcases the potential pitfalls of autonomy. So here I'm going to show you a movie that depicts one of the very first accidents involving two self-driving cars. So it turned out that uh, in 2007, midway through the DARPA Urbagan Challenge, the MIT self-driving car collided with the Cornell self-driving car. So what happened is that, uh, or, and here, oops. So on the top, I'm showing the, um, view of the MIT car as it was approaching an intersection, intersection, and at the bottom, I'm showing what the MIT car was thinking about the encounter scenario. So as you can see, at the intersection, somehow, without an apparent reason, the Cornell car, the black car, is stopped. And so the MIT car, interpreting erroneously the Cornell car as a static obstacle, tries an evasive maneuver to overcome the Cornell car. But at the sudden, suddenly, the Cornell car starts moving, and the MIT car still believes that the Cornell car is a static obstacle, so it keeps going with its plan, and finally the two cars collide. So there were a number of reasons why this accident happened, but the two main reasons was that, on the one hand, the complex interaction between perception and constraint-based planning on the Cornell car created confusion in the Cornell car to the point that it stopped without reason at the intersection. On the, other, on the other hand, the MIT car did not take into account uh, any uh, modeling for the intent uh, of the other agents, so that erroneously interpreted the Cornell car as a static uh, object. So my approach to uh, um, endow uh, autonomous systems with the increasingly sophisticated levels of decision making is to rely on optimization-based control which refers to the use of online optimal generation of control inputs for the feedback control of a system. So in other words, every few milliseconds, uh, we solve an optimization problem to compute a control sequence, a sequence that minimizes a certain cost function. Where well, the cost function captures some cost related to our state trajectory X and our control sequence U. Of course, uh, the optimization process has to take into account the fact that the state control pair as to obey the dynamical equations of our system, and two, that there might be additional constraints coming from the interaction between the autonomous system and environment. And P here denotes uh, 
potential parameters that uh, model the environment. Now, um, the idea of optimization-based control has been used uh, quite extensively in the process control community to control systems like, for example, uh, chemical plants or oil refineries, power plants, and so on. So my research tries to scale it up, try, tries to scale optimization-based control up from the field of uh, automation to the field of autonomy. And in particular, I've been working on uh, five different uh, computational aspects of uh, optimization-based con control. I've been working on the problem of uh, uh, coming up with the planning algorithms to compute trajectories for agile systems, for example, drones, or in order to take into account the intent of other agents. I've been working on the interplay between uh, planning and uh, perception by taking into account the sto stochastic nature of a perception. I've been devising algorithms that are, that are amenable to massive parallelization uh, in collaboration, for example, with uh, Qualcomm. And I've been working on uh, integration with a higher level of uh, tactical and strategic decision making uh, by devising essentially a new framework for risk sensitive optimization based control. And last but not the least, I've been working on uh, theoretical guarantees for the solution of uh, such complicated optimization problems. As uh, also the previous uh, uh, talk was mentioning, trying to understand uh, how many steps are needed in order to find a solution is extremely important, especially in the field of autonomous systems, where uh, understanding how long it takes in order to find a solution uh, essentially dictates whether a system is safe or not. Now, we're now in a situation where we can solve a complicated uh, uh, optimal control problems and trajectory optimization problems online for a variety of systems. So here, for example, I'm demonstrating one of my students fighting with uh, a drone. So this is to portray how very quickly we can replan a trajectory in order to uh, take into account potentially very adversarial behaviors from uh, uh, our environment. So somehow this video became viral. But uh, the point here is to showcase is how we can reliably update our plans in order to counteract uh, an environment. Our next step here is actually to mount a uh, uh, plastic sword on the drone. In order, <laughs> one, because it's cool. Two, because for us it's a way of uh, really showcasing how we can integrate the intent of the environment into our planning procedure. Now we're working with a variety of uh, companies and NASA centers to uh, deploy this technology. Uh, and in particular, here I want to show a project that uh, I'm really excited about, about uh, devising uh, uh, space robots for exploration of uh, small solar system bodies. Comets and asteroids are very fascinating places. They may contain building blocks or the remnants of the building blocks of the solar system however to explore, but they present a unique set of challenges. There is the low gravity environment, or microgravity as we call it. For example, a person here on Earth would weigh as little as a paperclip on the surface of a comet. So a rover like Curiosity, which is currently exploring Mars, would actually only weigh a couple of kilograms. It wouldn't be able to generate much traction, and in fact, as it turns its wheels, it would probably just push itself away from the surface. It's actually quite likely to end up rotating and landing upside down, at which point it's ended the mission for the rover. So instead, together, JPL and Stanford have been working on a totally different rover concept that is well suited to these environments called Hedgehog. Instead of rolling around on wheels, the Hedgehog design actually puts three flywheels on the inside of a cube. By spinning these flywheels up very slowly and then very quickly applying a brake which transfers all the momentum from the flywheels, we're able to cause Hedgehog to either hop or tumble or perform small adjustments. So we've done many tests here on Earth in gravity offloading test beds. Recently, we have flown two Hedgehog prototypes on a zero-G aircraft. In these tests, we demonstrated that we would be able to perform on a comet or an asteroid. Hedgehog doesn't have a right way up. Instead, it can tumble over the surface and come to rest on any one of its faces and still work perfectly. The Rosetta mission has sent back lots of very fascinating images from the surface of Comet 67P, and these images show us some incredibly rugged terrain, including large sinkholes where a traditional rover would get terribly stuck. So we've even tested Hedgehog performing a type of escape maneuver, where it spins itself up and does this tornado-like maneuver where it can actually launch itself vertically out of a sandpit. 
In our future work, we're looking at increasing their level of autonomy, giving the Hedgehog Rovers the ability to think for himself and to navigate from one point to another. The Hedgehog Rover's ability to move around on the surface of comets and asteroids could enable a wide range of applications and science in the future. All right, so I'll conclude by saying that autonomy represents a major trend in a variety of industries, from transportation to logistics to space exploration and so on. Within my lab, the Autonomous Systems Lab, we are trying to push the idea of optimization-based control for the reliable and quick control of autonomous systems. We have made progress in a number of areas, but of course uh, it's all about uh, corner cases, so I think a lot more work is needed. I will conclude by advertising a new class that I'm proposing for next year, Principle of Robotic Autonomy. If there are any students interested in this line of research, I, will, I, I welcome you next year for my class. Thank you very much.